welcome back. Well, after a long wait, we do have the January WPI data, which is coming at around 4.73%. This compares to 4.95% on a month-on-month -month basis. So there's definitely, definitely softness, which has emerged on the WPI data for January, contrary to what we saw in the CPI data. Lata is here with more details. Lata, it is a 24-month low, which is coming. Yes, and that is to be expected because these are year-ago very high numbers over which uh, mm. these numbers were expected to count. Remember, last year, even leading to the Ukraine war, we had seen a lot of metal price increase and oil price increase in Jan, Feb itself. And then, of course, Ukraine pushed everything up. But because it's coming off a high base, mm. uh, the numbers were expected to come lower. But uh, I just want to point out, before I come to the inflation number itself, that uh, the November inflation number has been revised up rather sharply from 5.85 to 6.12. So that's almost a 30 basis point increase. Usually, un, uh, uh, you know, this is unusual, such a uh, sharp increase. But be that as it may, the number for uh, January itself at 4.73 is not at all alarming. It's lower than 4.95 in December. Uh, one of the news agencies had a poll of 4.6. So you may whine a little saying that it is about 13 basis points more than the poll, but that's not saying much. What the WPI number brings home is that uh, uh, the same uh, food problem is there in the WPI as well. The food index is up 0.5% on the month. Remember, the uh, CPI was 2.6% on the month. So that's a bit shocking. But uh, if you uh, looked at, uh, okay, there is a 2.95%, uh, sorry, there is a 2.95% food inflation higher. So that looks a little scary. I think that 0.5 uh, uh, is some other index. Food inflation WPI is 2.95 up on the month. And that looks like it is uh, uh, attesting to what we saw in the CPI as well. Manufactured products inflation has fallen to 2.99. That's almost 3% compared to 3.37 in December. That's a positive. <laughs> Fuel inflation also lower, 15 and 15 15.15 compared to 18% uh, uh, in December. So overall, there has been a, a, a reduction in YOY terms in manufactured uh, products and in fuel. Only in food inflation, we are seeing a rise. So quite clearly, that has to be attributed to cereals. Cereals index, this one says, is up 1.7% on the month. Remember, in CPI, the cereals index was 2.6%. I mean, uh, it looks a little lower, Perhaps there are always times when retail inflation is a little more uh, because of specific pockets of availability. But this 1.7% is an ugly number. Short point, uh, WPI overall, not to worry. Worrisome point is food inflation and cereals inflation. It is merely attesting what we saw in the CPI. Lata, is this WPI data going to be seen in context of what happened with the CPI data now? That despite WPI mm. maybe coming higher than what the street was estimating at around 4.6%, it's at least better than what the CPI data reported. Uh, well, actually, the WPI is a slightly less important number because yeah. the policy is mandated to On look CPI. at CPI. Mm. So to that extent, uh, the MPC can't shake off mm -hmm. the fact that it is going into a meeting with the inflation number higher than their mandate. Yeah. Uh, so that is what is going to hurt them. Therefore, uh, I mean, I don't see the uh, lower WPI having a very, very big yeah. impact on mm -hmm. uh, the MPC. For what it is worth, at the moment, the bond yields have softened by about one basis point. Okay. But that's neither here nor there. I think the big takeaway is that uh, cereals inflation Can't has close. come in high. So it is kind of giving uh, uh, a proof mm -hmm. that the CPI number was not all that incorrect. Okay, so we can deal with one shock, which is a CPI number. <laughs> Two shocks we are not okay with, right? So, uh, all right, thanks a lot, Lata, for joining in and explaining uh, to us. That's the January WPI inflation number. But let's move on now. Uh, we have a copy.